Historically, Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL has been treated with intensive chemotherapy plus a BCR able tyrosine kinase inhibitor. And with that combination, we can generally uh, achieve long-term survival of up to about 50% uh, in patients. However, one major problem with that combination is that many patients still relapse, and they often relapse with a specific mutation in the ABL gene called T315i. Um, and so panatinib is a, uh, a, a specific uh, uh, BCR able T, uh, TKI that is able to overcome those uh, mutations. It's uh, been shown to be, have uh, significant activity in combination with intensive chemotherapy. Uh, we've shown very high molecular response rates when given with hyper-CVAD plus panatinib, uh, with many patients not, uh, having very long-term survival without need for transplant and first remission. And blenitumab is also a very effective drug in relapsed refractory Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL, um, and uh, it is associated with very high rates of MRD response. So our, this trial was specifically to look at two of these very potent agents that we have, so panatinib, a very potent TKI, and blenitumab, a very uh, effective uh, immune-based therapy uh, with the attempt that we can uh, develop this chemotherapy-free combination. So the design of the study is we give panatinib uh, 30 milligrams uh, daily uh, in combination with blenitumumab. Uh, importantly, we start them both at the same time. This is in contrast, for example, to the D'Alba study, which was done by the Italian group that uh, did sequential uh, desatinib for a period of time and then introduced the blenitumumab. So we inter introduced both the TKI, panatinib, and blenitumumab at the same time, uh, beginning with cycle one. Uh, we start panatinib again at 30 milligrams daily, and then we decrease the dose to 15 milligrams daily once patients achieve a complete molecular response, meaning we can't detect uh, bcr able transcripts by PCR anymore. We give up to five cycles of blenitumumab, and then patients just receive maintenance uh, panatinib uh, for up to, or for at least five years, uh, and indefinitely if they're tolerating well. We also give uh, 12 doses of intrathecal chemotherapy, uh, which is important to prevent uh, CMS relapses. So we've treated 55 patients so far, uh, 35 patients with newly diagnosed Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL, 14 patients with relapsed refractory pH positive ALL, uh, and six patients with CML and lymphoid blast phase. So we've seen very high rates of response and particularly complete molecular response, so essentially MRD negativity. So in the frontline cohort, for example, 85% of patients achieved a complete molecular response. In the relapsed refractory cohort, 79% of patients achieved a complete molecular response. Uh, the responses are lower in the patients with CML and lymphoid blast phase because it's really a different biology. Uh, I think importantly, when we look at the durability of these responses in the frontline cohort in particular, uh, what we have seen is no, none of the patients have relapsed. Um, and we've only transplanted one patient. So this is in sharp contrast to uh, what the dogma has been for a long time in Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL, where the thought that was we need to get everybody into remission and then transplant them in first remission. So we've only transplanted one out of the 35 patients. And despite the fact that most of these patients are not transplanted with a chemotherapy-free regimen, we have a two-year overall survival rate of 93%, uh, again, with no relapses. Uh, outcomes also look very good in the relapsed refractory group. We have a two-year survival of 61%, so it looks encouraging also in patients with uh, relapsed refractory pH positive ALL. So the safety is really consistent with the known uh, toxicity profiles of uh, panatinib and blenitumab when given separately. So certainly panatinib, uh, it can be associated with particular toxicities, cardiovascular tox toxicities, pancreatitis, blood clots. Um, but by starting at a 30 milligram dose and then going down to 15 milligrams for patients who achieve a complete molecular response, which is, again, the vast majority of patients, uh, we have seen uh, some uh, grade three toxicities, but we have, we have not seen any uh, serious grade four or five toxicities with the panatinib regimen. Uh, blenitumab, again, uh, we're, is uh, a, a very safe drug in pH positive ALL. The main toxicity that we see are cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. We had one patient uh, with grade three cytokine release syndrome. The rest of the toxicities were grade one and two. Uh, only one patient had to discontinue blenitumab therapy, and that was a patient who had just persist uh, a recurrent uh, grade two neurotoxicity. So overall, very consistent with the known side effect profiles of those drugs given individually.
So I think we really need to confirm the durability of these responses. So we're very encouraged by this, uh, the idea that we've had very high rates of complete molecular response, uh, and so far, very good durable remissions without, um, without transplant. Um, but we want to confirm the durability and make sure that there's no later relapses with this different regimen. I think going forward, if these data are confirmed with longer follow-up, I think this is really a potential paradigm shift in the treatment of pH positive ALL. So we've already seen that with, again, the study with dasatinib and blenitumumab, seen very good uh, results with a chemotherapy-free regimen. I think our study is uh, somewhat unique in the fact that we haven't transplanted patients, so we've really shown the proof of principle of giving these chemotherapy-free reg chemotherapy regimens without routine transplant and first remission. So if these data are confirmed, I think that the standard will change, and we really won't be giving chemotherapy or transplant for the vast majority of patients with pH-positive ALL, regardless of age. Mm -hmm.